Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hi, everybody. It's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bo coming to you for a late Sunday night edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. The Mavericks didn't play. Luka Doncic did, as he is now 3-0 in All-Star games after Team LeBron defeated Team Durant 163-160. to How you doing, Josh? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm cracking up at the knowing how many of our fellow Mavs bloggers are out there and how many of them probably have some some traffic goals that they want to hit that surrounds this All-Star game. And I'm just cracking up at the idea of, like... <laughs> Luca giving these all star performances and everyone's like got their CMSs open and trying to write a story and it's like oh god he only scored eight points again it's just I don't care but it's just it's just a funny it's just funny I mean he might like like there was a, a I can't remember the specifics but at the end of his career Rashid Wallace was basically running three point line to three point line which is what Luka Doncic did tonight um, there's like. I, you know, it's funny, like the, the all-star game is not catered to his style of game unless he is the guy who's opting to go for MVP. And there's usually two or three guys where it just sort of happens through the course of play. Like Giannis really allows us for it. Um, and, and, you know, Curry, when he is hitting as, as you know, he was at league MVP tonight um was pretty incredible but it's just like Luca he's just not gonna have the ball enough a lot of times um you know it, it like comes it became kind of like obvious like uh uh Garland was really really going for it <laughs> like 12 point yeah, or 12 show. you know it's like why not it's his hometown thing and and so it's just like it becomes a little obvious whenever people are really going for for like trying you know they tried to do that with Derek and Dallas I don't remember what year that was but it it's was like 2010 they, they fed him looks yes. and he just couldn't hit and then it's just like, it gets kind of weird. And like, you know, Luca's game's not for that, but I would like to, like the, he was there at the start of the Elam ending, so that fourth quarter. And like, even then he was just kind of putzing around. And I, I would like for him to try a little bit at some point in time, but you know, I don't know if that we're ever going to get that. Yeah. It was just funny. Like he was the only, like uh, of every player who played in this game that played at least 20 minutes he was the only one that didn't score at least 10 points which i just think is just kind of funny like even he scored even eight points every single all-star game <laughs> it's so funny and he doesn't even get that many like he had three assists like i mean it's just like it's just a riot how much he just doesn't he's just, he's just happy to be there man that's he's he's he lo- i think he loves being around all these guys i think he loves interacting with like the legends that come there Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm you're gonna we're gonna post the really really funny and adorable clip of MJ giving him a big hug like I think he loves all of that and like the game you know it's just kind of secondary to him but at a certain point like it, it, he's gonna be more involved because you know LeBron won't be there 
uh, you know, he's like he's gonna be a team captain within like five years, and it's gonna be hilarious if he's like the team captain and still playing thirty minutes and scoring like seven, seven or eight points. But whatever, it's fine. Well, just because I'm staring at the box score, so like we know Steph Curry scored fifty points and he had a ton of threes. How many three pointers do you think Steph took? Oh, I'm looking at it right now, so I, I'm sorry. It's hilarious. It's, it's like 27-3. 27, 27-3. Three. Yeah. <laughs> 27, <three. laughs> like, it's just it's That's bizarre. how much a team will take sometimes, but it was just... Oh, yeah. Oh, Can yeah. ice that shoulder after the game? God. So, it's it's one of these things where... where I just... I, I really enjoyed myself, though. I gotta say. like It was a fun game. Yeah. It was a fun game. I just wish, like, when it comes to All-Star Weekend, it's these sorts of things, and this has just been the case the entire time I've been a Mavericks fan, the Mavericks team, the players they've had, none of them have mattered relative to all-star stuff outside of Dirk winning the three-point contest once. And it's just, it's like a celebration of the league. And then (laughs) then the Mavericks are just not really part of it. Now where that changed tonight. And I think this is kind of a fun, like an opportunity to pivot. Cause again, like Luka just didn't do anything. Is you know is seventy five you know seventy fifth anniversary and there were three Mavericks you know uh, uh, past and 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 um, present Mavericks that were involved. Obviously, Dirk Nowitzki was went out with the forwards. Uh, Jason Kidd went out with the guards, and then they had Luca along with three other younger players. John Morant was one of them. Basically, like they had like a pre you know pre set up speech that each of them read a line from. And I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. Like Luca is, is on a pathway to be a top, you know, 30 NBA player. If he just continues doing what he's doing now. So it's like seeing that sort of stuff is really, it's just fun. Like I, I really enjoyed what the league did tonight with all of kind of the honoring and, and, you know, paying respects to, to their legacy. what do you think? Yeah, that stuff's always really cool. And, you know, they got Dirk on the mic during the game, which was always good. Uh, you know, more more national recognition for Dirk. I'll always take it. And so it's always nice to see him get some shine. It is cool to see, you know, Kid and Dirk on that All-75 list. And, you know, I know Kid played for a handful of teams, but I, I think, you know, with the title and, and, and the way he entered the league, I think he's going to be remembered as a Maverick. So that that's cool. Uh, and then, you know, of course, Luca just kind of being like, it's always cool to see Luca around all these guys and just be like, he's just, I don't know, like learning by osmosis, like just kind of soaking in and not like a, not that like a guy like him needs it. Like he's obviously incredible with or without being around all these all time greats. But the fact that he's already been to what I mean, he's been in the league this is his fourth season and he's been to three all-star games. Like it's just, it's so cool that he's around these guys so early in his career and not just, you know, his, his, you know, the guys in his age group, you know, he's around LeBron and he's around Durant and he's around Curry and he's around some of the elder statesmen and Paul. Like, it's just cool that he's, he's going to be in locker rooms with these guys. And then eventually it's going to be like his locker room. Uh, in, in, in a few short years. And it's just kind of crazy to think about, um, you know, with Dirk, it always felt like he was, uh, you know, with the way he played in all-star games, which is, wasn't his fault, you know, it just wasn't suited to him. You know, he always kind of felt like a bystander or kind of like on the outside looking in, even though he was just as good, if not better than almost everyone else in that locker room with him. Uh, but with Luca, it's just, it's just always interesting to compare and contrast because he's going to be, one of the most pop he's already one of the most popular players on the planet and he's not even 25 years old yet so it's just fun to watch this continue and grow and, and the fact that he's soaking all this in four years into his career could be helpful. this this could be pure recency bias and i'm curious cause i'm not sure how much of all sorts stuff you you watched this weekend like i had i had the tv on in the background a lot of the weekend so i saw like a lot of peripheral stuff but i wasn't really paying like close close attention this felt like the first time where luca wasn't utterly starstruck by everything going on around him um in that like there was a scene and i want to say it was after the halftime ceremony like Michael Jordan snuck up behind Luka yeah. Doncic and gave him a hug. And Luka turns around, gives him, you know, a firm handshake. They obviously are smiling and laughing. And it's just like a sense of belonging, which, you know, that sort of thing is so cool to see. Because it's like, we know he belongs, but it's like, 
you know, if I was if I was near Michael Jordan, Carl like, Anthony Towns like fanboyed and like ran over to say hi and get and it's like who wouldn't? It's Michael Jordan. So it's just like <laughs> that sort of stuff that we've seen. You know, like Jason Kidd did that with Luke actually a couple of years ago. Like Barack Obama did too. Like there's always some cool incidents that go on at these All Star games. It's why I watch just to to see a lot of the interaction. Like these guys, you know, they, they some of them really don't like each other um for competitive reasons but like when they all get together and they're just kind of playing basketball like i I don't know i just i really get into it and i thought the league did a good job of of highlighting kind of just so many different guys this weekend you know luca got his chance to shine a little bit even though he he didn't really do too much in the game and there's just a lot of history covered and you know when when the league gets together for their 100th anniversary and in 2047 or whatever it's going to be is that right yeah that's that's right on the math um you know luca will in all likelihood be in that group of players yeah totally and it's yeah like i I didn't catch as much of the weekend as you did but i'm absolutely right there with you just how cool it is to see a a dallas maverick just breach just be at the level that he's at you know like Mm -hmm. you said like i said it's just you know dirk got there by the end of it but he was definitely not there in the middle of it despite how good he was like you know i'll say it all the time he kind of felt like our indie rock band that that no one had really discovered yet and luca is pop like luca was popular before he was a maverick like he had a a dedicated fan base before he even set foot uh, in dallas so it's just crazy to want like to see just the difference in, in journeys between the two and being able to witness this with Luca, like this is new for me. Like I'm not used to rooting. Like I'm not used to covering, rooting for a player on on my team that I that, that I follow. That is this is this popular? You know, like yeah. it's like that's that's a Lakers fan thing. That's a, a Warriors fan thing. Like you know, it's just it's it's a new it's a new feeling, and, it, and it's it's cool. But it's it, like I said, it's new. So it's 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 been fun to kind of experience it and you know he's gonna be at like 12 more of these things so uh, we're just gonna enjoy the show oh yeah well the last bit i do want to get in is you mentioned the the like dirt going on the broadcast thing that (laughs) really entertained me because Dwayne wade is really making an effort to be a tv guy and i just will never be a Dwayne wade guy i won't ever be it's just but he's pretty good on the mic gotta admit and he seems to be very cognizant of the fact that in like they all like both he and Dirk are like I, I suppose they get along, but one of the things I found very interesting was Dalton uh Trigg, our friend, sent me a message just like I just find this sort of thing like there's no way these guys don't really like each other. It's fine. Um I just I, I got to a little good natured debate with him. I'm like, I don't think Dirk wants to be within 50 fucking feet of Dwayne Wade at any point in time about anything ever. I, I just <laughs> I, I can't shake that. Like Reggie Miller, like jokingly addressed the tension and Dirk has this look on his face. Like, eh, no, I, I'm, I, you know, I can do this cause I'm a professional, but like, they've been kind of shoved together repeatedly, both for their play history and the fact that they retired at the same time, they're going to yeah. go in the hall of fame together. Like they're linked, <laughs> but you know, I, I just don't like playing like, like, I think I, I sort of wish there was, there was a little more appreciation of the fact that like, they don't have to like each other. I mean, it's okay. Dirk- Dirk said that, right? Like, while they were kind of joking and laughing, he kind of laughed and said, he was like, hey, not everyone has to like, you know, not everyone has to like each other. And, yes. like, it was really funny that he said that out loud. Yes. Like, he was basically, like, it, I mean, I know he was joke, like, he was laughing. But it was, he's, like, he's like, we can be professional, yeah. but we, like, we're not going to be friends. But we're not going and, to dinner after the game and yes. you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, with what Dwayne Wade said about him, he shouldn't. Yeah. Sorry, (laughs) that was a nasty thing to say at the time. And it's one of those things you can't take back. I mean, it's like Jordan and Isaiah Thomas are never going to be friends because Jordan blackballed Isaiah Thomas. Right. (laughs) It's just part of, it's part of history. But anyway, I, I, I really enjoyed myself. Now I am looking forward to a little bit of a, a slight basketball break, but with 23 games to go, I think you and I will still manage to to get our guys to put up a few things over the next several days. I'm curious to see if, if we actually podcast, because on the one hand, I wouldn't mind a break. On the other hand, like it always feels like there's something to talk about. And I've done that over the past couple of days uh, with the shorter hit podcast, Callie Kaplan just did a pair of one-on-one interviews, one with Luca and then one with Igor Kokoskov for the Dallas Morning News that were just like rife with like actual stuff. And I, I, 
you know, this this team is really a lot more interesting than they have any business being. And so I, as we round into the final fourth of the season, I'm I'm just I'm looking forward to things. Are you or are you are you kind of tired and ready for the playoffs? Yeah, a little bit of both. I'm ready for the playoffs, but the the KP trade has definitely given me like a renewed sense of of energy and 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 like a jolt of I mean not like optimism or anything like that, but just like in, like just my level of interest is is peaked now that you know, it was really tough watching this team because like how many times we said like they win games the same way and they they've been losing games the same way for the last 3 years. And it just kind of felt like they were just stuck on this on this treadmill where the roster was just never going to change and it was just going to be Luka and KP and, and these role players forever. And, and KP's gone. And it's the most dramatic thing they've done to the roster in three years. And now it feels like, okay, let's, there's something new here. Like, I, you know, not necessarily saying Spencer Dinwiddie and, and Bertans are going to be like these game changing rotational players, but the Mavericks are now going to have to do things, even though KP missed a lot of games that we just, we haven't seen before all the time or consistently for, for a 20 game stretch. Um, so like, that's going to be fun. And it's going to like a playoff series, like is now it has a different feeling now that they've already shaken the roster this much uh, because now it's like, well, it seems like nothing else is off the table. Right. <laughs> they could do, if they were going to trade KP, they could trade basically anyone, but Luke, it feels like. So uh, there's, it just feels like now we're not just kind of stuck in cement watching this team. You know, it doesn't feel as preordained like the outcome uh, as it was before. So like there's something new and fresh and exciting about the team. And then, you know, the week off, I'm going to try to get some some more broader in-depth stuff up before the game start up. Like I want to write about the Mavs offense because I mean, like, look, just as like a sneak peek, I've just been like looking at teams since 2011, basically, and like how – the offensive rating of teams that win a playoff series since 2011. And it's just very interesting to look at that, those numbers and compare it to what, where the Mavericks are. Cause they're like six, 15 or 16 right now in the league. Uh, and so I'm just curious, like, is their offense good enough to win a playoff series? Cause the way the league's change offense mm-hmm. it matters a little bit more than it used to. Uh, you can't necessarily rock fight your way into the second or third rounds. Like you could in, in 2008 or, or 2009 uh, back in that era. So like it, the, the break is nice. We're going to definitely reload, but it's also good because we can like catch our breaths and, and look at some more long-term things as opposed to like, Hey, there's a game every other night. And uh-huh. we, you know, we can't, we can't sit down and talk about this because we got to go cover another game. So, well, and if that's the case, then we actually might get back together and talk about some of these things yeah. because I find it all, I find it all like really interesting. You know, there's, there's enough going on with this team to where I'm, I'm, <sighs> cautiously optimistic about where they're going despite understanding that their ceiling is lowered it's it's yes. just there's so many fun Agreed. little things that that could go on that could work themselves out over time you know closing uh closing on a on a number of wins they won six out of seven feels nice um you know it's it's there's just there's a lot to be positive and, and at least very intrigued about uh you know heading into this part of the season yes i agree totally <laughs> Okay, well, you know, as usual, you and I enjoy talking, so we talk longer than the 15 minutes we planned, but I think people won't mind. So, uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for your support. There's a lot of uh, quick hit pods over the last several days, just stuff that we recorded. Green rooms, things maybe to get you through the All-Star break if Josh and I aren't talking as much. Um, Please pop by Mavs Moneyball and read our stuff. We appreciate everybody's support, and we will talk to you guys a little later in the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, Just go to cars.com. It's magical.